how the apostles died. Jesus says in Mark 1.17, Come after me and I will make you fishers of men. What matters in life is not where you go, what happens to you or how you die. What does matter in life is how you respond when Jesus says to you, Follow me. Philippians 3 verse 10, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his suffering, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. My friends, the blood of the martyrs is the seedbed of the church. And in the first century, the martyrs, the apostles, and many, many others laid their life down today so that we can have freedom in Christ and know this sure thing that I want to come to know him. Let's have a look at these martyrs, some of them. Stephen, the first martyr, A.D. 34. The first recorded martyr, he preached with such anointing, provoked the people around him. And at the same time, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit for many to follow in that pathway. Stephen did not try to escape. He prayed, Lord, do not charge them with the sin. That was in Acts chapter 7. James, the son of Zebedee in AD 44, a fisherman by trade, when called by Jesus, left what he had for a lifetime of ministry. James was beheaded in Jerusalem 14 years after the death of Jesus. Philip the Apostle in AD 54. There are two Philips in the Bible. The New Testament called Philip the Apostle, who was from Bethsaida, and also Philip the Evangelist. Well, Philip the Apostle preached to the Gauls in France, where he was crucified and stoned. Then we've got Matthew, the son of Alphaeus, in AD 60. Matthew was a tax collector and the brother to James, the son of Alphaeus. He was persecuted and beheaded in Ethiopia. Well, his brother James, in AD 63, was martyred. He was the leader of the church in Jerusalem, thrown down from the southeast pinnacle, like, like about a hundred foot up, and, and both his legs broke. He kneeled over and prayed for those attacking him. When his persecutors discovered he was still alive, they clubbed him to death. This is the same pinnacle where, where Satan took Jesus up during that temptation. Mark, AD 64, he was also known as John Mark. He founded the church in Alexandria in Egypt. He was roped, persecuted with hooks, and dragged through the streets, the cobblestone streets. He died the next day in prison. Christians were able to go and fetch his body and give him a good burial. Peter, AD 69, was martyred. He is imprisoned and persecuted in Mamertine prison. Peter was, was going to be executed by crucifixion, the same way as Jesus was. And Peter requested he did not want that. So they put him on an X-shaped cross, crucified him upside down. Paul, in AD 69, he was tortured by Nero in Rome. And while he was in Rome, he wrote many, many of, of his epistles to the New Testament. And then he was beheaded. Matthias, in AD 70, chosen to replace the traitor Judas, was tortured and beheaded. Andrew was martyred in AD 70. He was also crucified on an X-shaped cross in Greece in a town called Patras. Andrew, AD 70, crucified on an X-shaped cross in Patras, Greece. They whipped him severely. And as he hung on that cross, he preached to his tormentors. Now listen to this. They didn't just crucify him. They tied him to the cross. And he hung there for two days. But while he hung there, he preached. Judas Thaddeus, the half-brother to Jesus. The book of Jude was written about him. It was addressed Thaddeus. Well, his name was Judas Thaddeus. It was only at the resurrection of Jesus Christ did he become a believer. 
he was executed with a javelin. Bartholomew, Nathaniel, AD 70. Bartholomew was martyred for his preaching in Armenia, where he was whipped to death. Thomas, in AD 70, was killed with a spear in Meliapur, India. Simon the Zealot, in AD 74, he was a missionary in North Africa, Spain, and in the UK, Britain. Simon was crucified upside down, and then after his death, he was sawn in half. Luke, AD 93, was martyred. Luke was the official historian of the early church. Luke lived to be an old man in a place called Boetia in, in Greece, where he was martyred being hung from a tree. But long before that, he suffered tremendously being tortured for his faith. They made a large bowl, filled it with oil, boiled it, and put him in it. Miraculously, he survived. They then, they then tried to poison him, and he survived. He was sent off to the island of Patmos, to the mines, where, while on the island of Patmos, the Lord spoke to John, and revealed to him what was about to come, and what we read today in the book of Revelations. Well, after his persecutor had died, John was released, and John became known as the Bishop of Ephesus in Edessa, which is modern-day Turkey. He died an old man. He's the only apostle that we know of that died peacefully. My friends, I want to pray with you now. I want to pray with you that, that you too will, will become a fisher of men. That you will live for Christ. And that you will desire to come to know Christ in every, in every area of your life. Let's pray. Father God, I call on you now in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for what has gone before us. Thank you for the apostles. Thank you for all the martyrs, Lord God, who have, have become the seedbed of our faith. Thank you, Lord, that, that we had someone pray for us, someone lead us to you. Thank you, Father, that we too have knelt down and given our life to you. And right now, Lord God, I pray that we will not step back and waver in our faith when persecution comes. We will rise up. We will be strong in our faith. We will be strong in the Lord. We will be strong in this, that our confidence will be in you, Lord, because you are the one that raises us up and takes us out of dark, deep valleys. You give us strength to overcome, and we will rise and bring you the glory in everything we do, in everything we say. And Father, right now I do, I pray for the persecuted church. I pray for people, Lord God, who are suffering for the name of Christ. I pray, Father God, that your mercy would rest upon them and you would give them strength. Lord, I pray right now for my, for my brother and my sister listening to this message, who, whose faith is weak. Lord God, draw them. Draw them to you. Bring them closer to you, Father. And let their faith be strengthened in you. May they not waver in their faith, Lord God. May, by, may they be strong in their faith, not shrinking back, but run the race with perseverance set before them. Thank you, Lord, that we can serve you. We will choose, Lord God, to testify of your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen.